In its long history, Earth has seen all kinds of creatures come and go, both big and small, ooky spooky and altogether kooky. They have fascinated us for years, so much so that scientists are actually looking for ways to bring them back to life. You know, I said this on a few other videos, but we literally have five dinosaur movies that says that's kind of a bad idea. On that note, today we're going to be taking a look at some of the animals that are better left in the past. Here are 10 extinct animals we shouldn't bring back. Number one alone is enough to give you nightmares, so stand by for that. I look forward to reading your comments saying how I'm pronouncing all of these things wrong, but guess what? I'm doing it on purpose just to annoy you. With all that said and done, let's begin, shall we? Number 10. The Titanoboa. 60 million years ago, in the swampy waters of what is now Colombia, there lurked the Titanoboa, by far the biggest snake that ever lived. At nearly 50 feet long and weighing in at 2,500 pounds, it was 10 times as heavy as the average green anaconda. And mind you, that is a giant that now rules Titanoboa's stomping grounds, or slithering grounds in this case. Titanoboa were so big, it pushed the boundaries of being able to exist on land and remain in accordance with the laws of physics. You, me, every cat and antelope, and every other creature that inhabits this great Earth we live on, we've all evolved under the constraints of gravity. Evolution did get a bit carried away and produced the 100-foot blue whale, the biggest critter ever, only because gravity doesn't affect giants as much in the sea. Scientists reckon Titanoboa must have also exploited this kind of simulated weightlessness. It was so outsized that according to paleontologist David Pauly, almost certainly it would have spent a large part of its time in the water. This in turn allowed it to grow to its massive proportions. Number 9. The Dunkleosteus. The Dunkleosteus belongs to the Placodermi, a family of armor-plated fishes. More precisely, it was an arthrodire, one of the most advanced members of the Placoderm fish. Dunkleosteus was probably the largest member of the Placoderms, and the largest animal up to that time, which would stay that way until the evolution of the dinosaurs. The Placodermi first started appearing in the Silurian, and all of them were extinct by the late Devonian. Fortunately, there are no modern descendants, and you're going to see the reason why. It was a vicious, gluttonous hunter, and probably ate whatever hapless creature it could overpower. The discovery of Dunkleosteus armor with unhealed bite marks strongly suggests that they cannibalized each other when the opportunity arose. Frequently, fossils of Dunkleosteus are found with boluses of fish bones, semi-digested and partially eaten remains of other fish, and as a result, the fossil record indicates that it may have routinely regurgitated prey bones rather than digesting them. Even more terrifying are their mouths, which ironically lack teeth, and instead of actual teeth, Dunkleosteus possessed two long, bony blades that were extensions of its jaw. These extensions could slice through flesh and snap and crush bones and almost anything else at that point. These plates also sharpened themselves every time the fish closed its mouth. Number 8. The Sarcosuchus. The Sarcosuchus was a 40-foot-long, 10-ton crocodile-like reptile from the Cretaceous era that lived in what is now known as Africa and South America. Any predator that can move between land and water is even harder to escape when it wants to eat you. It had a 6-foot-long skull that contained 132 teeth. What truly sets this creature on the top 10 list is that Sarcosuchus was larger than almost all of the dinosaurs that lived in the same environment, and evidence points to a diet that included large terrestrial prey. To put it bluntly, this monster ate dinosaurs. It is true that its diet consisted largely of fish and it spent most of its time submerged in the water, but the fact that it could take down something like Suchamimus, a 35-foot-long theropod, is quite troubling, actually. Number 7. The Mega Piranha. Piranhas are already vicious creatures. They have the reputation of being aggressive and voracious eaters. For what they lack in size, they more than make up for by gang warfare. They swarm any would-be prey in staggering numbers, taking tiny bites until the prey succumbs to its eventual fate, allowing these tiny predators to take down animals way bigger than them. Now, if a group of two-pound piranhas can do this, imagine what a piranha ten times that size could do. The Mega Piranha lived in South America between 10 and 6 million years ago, and weighed anywhere between 20 to 30 pounds. They grow so large out of necessity. They lived at a time when the snakes, fish, and crocodiles they likely fed on were also gigantic. The fish was believed to be as ferocious, if not more, as its modern descendants. But what sets them apart is the sheer strength of their bite. Although it couldn't have crushed a car in its mouth, the jaws of this extinct relative of modern piranhas could exert a force of up to 50 times the fish's own weight. Pound for pound, that makes it a stronger bite than even that of the Megalodon. Number 6. The Giant Short-Faced Bear Bears are already terrifying creatures. Encountering an especially hungry one out in the woods isn't really going to have a happy ending, but their early ancestors are much worse. 
As vicious and twice as large, the giant short-faced bear is the largest mammalian land carnivore ever to live in North America. This monster in particular reached heights of over 11 feet when standing upright. They lived from 1.6 million to 11,000 years ago, alongside giant ground sloths, mammoths, and near the end of the Ice Age, the first Native Americans to enter Iowa. It had very long legs for a bear and a relatively short body given its height. Its feet were also distinctive in that the toes face forward rather than inward, as in other bears the opposite is true. As its name suggests, this animal had a short face and a broad muzzle with very robust teeth. Although recent research suggests that its face may not have been much shorter proportionally than its modern relatives. Although they are classified as omnivores, scientists believe that they mostly hunt and eat meat. They base this on the shape of the jaws and teeth found in fossilized remains. Number 5. The Dinosuchus the dino and dinosuchus derives from the same root as the dino and dinosaur, connoting fearsome or terrible. In this case, the description is perfect. Dinosuchus was one of the largest prehistoric crocodiles that ever lived, attaining lengths of up to 33 feet from head to tail and weights in the neighborhood of 5 to 10 tons. And although it's significantly smaller than its predecessor, the Sarcosuchus, it was definitely no less frightening. In fact, it can be said that it duked it out with more ferocious opponents than its predecessor, because there is actually fossil evidence that the Dinosuchus regularly fought and won against the Tyrannosaurus Rex. What's worse is, like their modern descendants, prehistoric crocodiles were constantly growing. In the case of Dinosuchus, at the rate of about one foot per year, so it's difficult to know exactly how long the longest lived specimens were, or at what point in their life cycles they reached maximum size. Other than its enormous proportions, Dinosuchus was remarkably similar to modern crocodiles, an indication of how little the crocodilian line of evolution has changed over the past 100 million years. Number 4. The Megalodon Yeah, right, I'm pretty sure that this next entry in our list didn't come as a surprise to many of you. In fact, I'm sure if this one wasn't on this list, I'm sure I'd be seeing tons of comments asking where it was. In the world of the big predators, even 11-foot bears wouldn't want to tangle with the biggest sharks that ever lived. From 16 million years ago to about 2 million years ago, 50-foot-long creatures, which is about triple the size of today's great white sharks, preyed on whales, apparently biting off their fins to immobilize them, a feat not even the biggest of modern sharks can claim of being able to do. The reason why these humongous sharks can take down whales on a regular basis is probably the immense power of its bite. According to some studies, a megalodon's bite was strong enough to crush a car. Amazingly, most of what scientists know about this megapredator comes from studying its teeth. Like modern sharks, the rest of its skeleton was cartilage, which decomposes much more rapidly than bone in these few fossils. These fossilized teeth may also be the way for scientists to bring back this megapredator, if enough viable DNA material can be salvaged. But given the fact that bringing this mega predator back from extinction could give rise to problems that would greatly outweigh any benefit it might bring us, I think we should just leave these guys alone. I mean, seriously, we have a movie titled The Meg and also Jaws. Come on, this isn't rocket science. Number 3 The Quetzalcoatl. Terrifying animals that can occupy only the ground and the water. Some of them can fly as well. Just imagine a predatory creature the size of a giraffe with a 33-foot wingspan flying through the air. Impossible, you might say, but as history has always proved, nothing is impossible with evolution. Quetzalcoatl Northropia lived during the Cretaceous period alongside dinosaurs and might have even eaten smaller ones. A theory detailed in a Wired magazine article in 2013 suggests that they mostly hunted by walking around like a stork, plucking plants and small animals up off the ground with their six-foot beaks. However, when they took to the air, researchers think they were graceful and powerful flyers. Quetzalcoatl had hollow bones like modern birds, a crucial trait that allowed them to take to the air. So in comparison, where giraffes weigh as much as 2,800 pounds, these creatures only carried about 550 pounds up into the air. Scientists also believe that they were such efficient flyers, so much so that they might have been able to fly and glide for days at a time. Also show that they were covered with hair, which probably helped them regulate their body temperature during flight. Now it's time for the day's best pick. And today we're going to be looking at a creature with a severe case of overbite and probably an inferiority complex that puts it into a perennial bad mood. Number 2. Helicoprion. Helicoprion is one of the stranger sharks in the fossil record. How and where the tooth were attached has been a source of puzzlement to paleoichthyologists ever since it was realized just what it was. The only sure way to solve this mystery is to bring these animals back to life, if at all possible. 
but think about it. Are we really willing to add another fearsome shark into the world's oceans that would probably be even more terrifying than the Great White? I, I don't think so, personally. I saved the best for last, but first, I have a quick challenge that takes only 5 seconds to complete. If you can leave a like and subscribe within the next 5 seconds, you'll get 10 years of amazing luck. Just try it, it really works. Number 1. The Arthropleura at more than six feet long, these millipede-like creatures were the biggest arthropod to have scuttled around on the Earth. Or at least it's the biggest one we know about so far. Scientists aren't completely sure why, but around 300 million years ago, bugs grew to epic proportions. Not a good time for a lot of people that I know. Scientists, however, have theorized that the ancient oxygen-rich atmosphere at that time, which is about 30% compared to the 31% that we have now, is the main reason for insect gigantism. Plus the fact that there still weren't any creatures equipped enough to predate on them. On land, the largest vertebrates were probably smaller than some of these arthropods. One comforting thought, though. Arthropleura probably wasn't a predator, since it was related to millipedes, which eat decomposing organic matter. But with its size, I don't believe people will be clamoring to bring it back to life anytime soon. Do you know of any other extinct animals that should stay that way? Let us know in the comment section below. Want to watch more videos about amazing animals? Click on any of the videos you see on your screen. Again, all thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Later, everybody.